Okay, moment. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Hey, hello. Welcome to some Java channel. Uh, with uh, to Doris. Um, to Doris, please uh, introduce yourself. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes. Yes. So basically, uh, I can. Oh wait. Uh, I also have it uh, open in the other screen, so uh, I can hear an echo. Just give me a sec. Great. So um, I will just kick it off, actually. Can you see my screen? OK. Good. Great. So uh, thanks a lot for being here tonight. And uh, we're going to talk about Developer career, right? Uh, how to own your developer career. I guess most of you are already here developers, and uh, I guess all of you are quite interested in how to grow your career as software developers. So actually, let me just start with a story. Before this, uh, cha this challenging time that we are currently facing, uh, of course, I used to go to my work uh, using uh, public transportation, right? So I was basically using uh, a bus, a metro, and all these kind of things. So many times, or quite often, it happened that uh, when I was in the bus, I I used to 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 create that metaphor with my mind uh, compared to the way the bus driver accelerates or brakes. So many times, I was comparing the way a bus driver accelerates with my career. And many times it felt like this, to be honest. I, I, felt, I felt many times like I was about to dunk, right? I was like, I am able to do this. I'm really about to achieve my goals and uh, I'm doing really well. But there were also other times in my career that it really felt like the bus driver was breaking. So I felt like that. I, I, I really felt that I really wanted to stay alone in a room and start crying because I couldn't really achieve my goals or because uh, I, might I might have not done it really well in a presentation or uh, in a meeting and so on and so forth. So just a few words about this talk. What are we gonna talk about basically today? First of all, a disclaimer. I never intended to become a public speaker, to be honest. But uh, I was on vacation uh, at some point and I was invited uh, from a local meetup to speak about my experiences abroad uh, as a software engineer, how it felt like uh, being a developer in a different country. And uh, I liked it, to be honest. Uh, or the passion I received from the developers, it was uh, really motivating for me to keep doing that. And if you can change the way one person things in a room, then it makes you more happy. So about this talk, I would like to split it in two parts mainly. In the first part, I will basically explain what I believe is important for your career as a software developer. In the second part, I would like to drop the ball in your court. So basically in the second part, I'm more than eager to ask, to answer any kind of questions you guys might have tonight. Uh, so just a short introduction. My name is Fodoris Bais, or Fodoris Bais in English, uh, Greek by origin, living and working in the Netherlands for the last four years. 
in my day-to-day -day job, I am a scrum master for the ABN Armor Bank. So basically, uh, I help uh, software teams to create and deliver better software faster. Uh, besides that, I'm running the Utrecht Java User Group, uh, which is uh, a Java user group in Utrecht, of course, as a city in the Netherlands. We have around 2,500 members. And of course, in my free time, I also help people to achieve their career and life aspirations via my own company, Agile Leaders. Enough about me, though. Nobody cares about me. Let's quickly dive into the presentation of today, right? So the world we live in, what happens in there, actually? How did we start? So how did we come? in today to discuss to start discussing about uh th the profession of a software engineer what makes it so important so everything started basically around 70 years ago right where we needed a room this big i would like to say if we were in a physical meetup in a real uh, uh room to perform a single calculation right and of course today the years passed and Today, we're talking about contactless payments, and God knows, maybe tomorrow we're going to talk about foldable smartphones, right? We, we can never know where the, how the world, the world is going to change, right? So I would basically like to touch a bit upon my perception, my personal perception of the profession of software of a software engineer this is how it looks like basically right so pair programming behind two three or even four screens if you're a trader right you never know um and you try to solve the problem together with your peers or at least this is how we think it should like right because i personally have quite a different perception there are Mainly three things I do believe software engineering is all about. First of all, open source, right? It is really important to get involved in the open source projects. And I know Daniel, for example, is quite uh, involved in uh, open source projects and into the community. I will touch a bit upon the community itself as we speak. For now, I would like to stress the importance of getting involved in open source software projects. I started, uh, I was basically doing my nine to five as a Java developer, but at some point I realized that there is quite some difference in the mindset uh, of a backend developer compared to a front end developer, right? So at some point I really wanted to get a good grasp on how a front-end developer thinks like. So I started experimenting with um, plain JavaScript, uh, the NPM itself, Jasmine for testing and so on and so forth. So I came up with a very simple project uh, around five or uh, four years ago, a very simple math library that I just used as a playground for me so that I could learn JavaScript. And at some point, at some point, I realized that, hey, I really want to also test that project. So how could I really test a JavaScript project? So I had to use Jasmine, the Jasmine framework, to properly test my simple math library, right? And at some point, I found uh, a small gap regarding uh, my testing scope. I found out that the library couldn't really serve my purpose. The library was perfect, of course. It was just my requirement that was that small, that specific, that I needed to somehow extend the library. And what did I do? I just forked the project. I added my feature. I submitted a pull request. It got approved. And of course, I'm now one of the, con the contributors of the Jasmine framework, right? So this is a very simple example, not to show you how cool I am. Uh, as I said, it's not about me. It is just about the example of how an open source project 
could really help you in growing your career because it starts small. It started from a very plain math library and it escalated into having a closer and a deeper look into the testing framework I was using, into the testing framework the, ma the majority of our community is using to test software, sorry, JavaScript projects. So this is a very basic example. And I also improved, to be honest, my, my bash skills and my Git skills. Uh, everything or the majority of advanced Git techniques I learned came out from uh, the open source projects I, I contributed to. So please do contribute to open source software. It will, it will really help you in growing your career. This is one. What about the second point I, I would like to stress today? The second point is please invest in your brand. Please get out there and create meaningful content for your audience. What do I mean by that, actually? What do I mean when I'm talking about creating meaningful content for your audience? I don't care if it's going to be a YouTube video, a vlog, a blog post. It is up to you. It is up to you. And of course, it is up to what makes you feel happier when you're sharing your content, right? So I leave it up to you. but. If you really going to grow your career, you need to start helping people, right? And of course, that can only happen by creating content, content you like. Otherwise, it is never going to be fun, I'm telling you. So please invest in your own brand because that will definitely grow your career. How could that grow your career? By, of course, coming now to the third point of my perception of software engineering, communities, right? do attend meetups like this one tonight or tonight here in Europe uh, today or uh, here this evening uh, for Brazil, of course. And thanks a lot once again for hosting me. What do we gain via those community meetups? Of course, we come across, we come to meet like-minded people and exchange ideas and you never know what's going to come out of that, right? When you have like-minded people together in the same room, talking about the same interest, very interest, there are, there are only good things that might come up. Simple example, last um, May 2019, basically, I hosted a panel session here uh, in Utrecht uh, for the Tech Nation conference with uh, the title why you should be involved in a local developer community, right? And uh, there were quite some interesting questions to the speakers. I had around me Microsoft MVPs, uh, Java champions. And basically, at some point, there was a question like, guys, you're really well known. You're really famous uh, in the community. Uh, it was referred. It was addressed to the Java champions and uh, Microsoft MVPs that had around me. What are, what is the payback that you get by being involved in those developer communities? And I'm telling you, everybody replied the same way. There is no financial payback. But at the same moment, it doesn't really matter. Why? Because that was a really good uh, answer at, at that moment. Because uh, one person said, every new job I got after being involved in a local developer community was only one phone call away. How could we really understand that? Of course. Every new employer or every new job that person or you could get could also be just a phone call away. How could that be possible? Because the people you get to meet in those meetups or in those community gatherings are people like you. And you never know who might be in search of someone to strengthen their company, right? So that's why I want to stress once again to invest quite some of your free time in those
technical meetups in those community gatherings. So to wrap it up, in my perception, and also how your own perception should be regarding the software engineering of nowadays, three main things. Open source projects, meaningful content, meetups. And of course, now you're gonna tell me like, uh, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, Tio, you can also call me Tio. It's really cool, Tio, all the things that you're telling us, but I'm pretty sure it requires some uh, specific mindset to keep it up with my nine to five and also my free time after that to invest it in anything related to those three items you mentioned, right? You, you definitely need some specific mindset to get that. What is the mindset one should have in order to start doing the, those three things? We're mainly talking about a career in T here, right? And how do we really define a career in T? First of all, we have a horizontal axis, right? Uh, you really need to be expert in one thing. For example, you could be expert in the Java language. Uh, you need to be expert in something. Um, of course, many people nowadays say you need to know a little bit of everything. This is a different extension or, or a different perception of a career in T. Still, we're talking about a career in T. Why is that? Because in order to get that knowledge around the, the, the little bits and pieces, you need to have some expert, expertise in a specific area. So you need to be expert in something in order to start growing your horizontal axis again, right? So your horizontal axis could be, for example, computer graphics, uh, JavaScript, databases, artificial intelligence, in order to be able to solve many different problems. But you should only go there in the horizontal axis once you do have the support and the core, that's why it is a vertical axis, of your expertise. You should be expert in something in order to be able to start expanding your horizons. So this is what we basically call a career in T. What have we talked about so far? We talked a bit about software now, software engineering nowadays. A mindset that you should have, we slightly touched a bit upon the mindset itself because we will extensively discuss the mindset one should have in order to keep it up nowadays in a fast-paced world. And also, we talked a bit about a career in T. Okay, you might wonder, what are the main things I should do on a daily basis in order to keep it up with all things, right? So there are mainly five things you should do on a daily basis to keep it up. First of all, read code, right? And most importantly, read code you do not understand. For example, you could be a Java developer and it is always nice in your free time to also read Java code, but what will give a different twist to your mindset will be to read code from a different programming language, like for example, Go code, right? It is quite a different mentality. There is quite a quite a different mentality behind the Go language. Sorry, so basically try to always read some code. And why am I stressing that? Because even if it is about 20 minutes per day, just invest 20 minutes per day reading code you do not understand. It will give you a different twist to sharpen out your mindset and your approach to problem solving. I will come back to problem solving soon. That was one, that was the first point. Second point is of course, sorry, is of course to write code, right? Writing code is what makes us better. Writing code means we keep being consistent to our profession. We keep practicing our craft and we need to keep practicing our craft. This is the, one of the main 
principles of getting better in what we do. We need to practice our craft because consistency, consistency is key in improving our skills. So read code, write code, third of all, deliver code, right? Because software delivery, let's be honest, software delivery makes everyone happy, right? And by the end of the day, let's look at this, look at it from this perception. I deliver code, right? And at the end of the day, of course, if I am able to deliver code, my product owner will be happy. My scrum master will also be happy, right? But also my team members. Of course, all those three different parties are not that important when you yourself feel happy by the end of the day. So software delivery definitely makes you happy as well, but it also makes anybody else, everybody else happy, right? So it is quite important to be able to deliver code as well. That's why I want you to also keep an eye on code delivery. And now I know, I know you might already be wondering, yeah, but here, you know, we're getting all these kind of queries. Our product owner is pushing us, hey, deliver that. I really need that now. And all this kind of stuff. And the Scrum Master is also pushing and pulling back and back and forth and back and forth. And we don't really know which direction we should go. So what is happening there? When it, when it is about to choose between delivering something now or making it perfect, what is happening there? What should your approach be? I want you to, of course, choose progress over perfection. Why? Because to get that straight, the perfectionist is never gonna deliver. What do I mean by that? Of course I mean that every code you write today will tomorrow be nothing else than technical debt. Okay, pause. Once again, every code that I write today will tomorrow be technical debt, right? Because just recall, just remember what happened yesterday when you looked back at the code you wrote six months ago. You were really making a fool out of yourself, right? You were really laughing at you with the code you wrote six months ago. So basically, every code you write today will be technical debt tomorrow. That's why we should always choose progress over perfection. Which also brings us to the fourth point, which is about problem solving. Why should we choose for progress over perfection? Because by delivering, it means we were able to solve the problem. So the fourth item here, the fourth thing we should be doing on a daily basis to grow our career is to solve problems. Because problem solving will give us or will boost our confidence to start picking up more and more and more complex pro problems so that we reach a good point at some, uh, after some time that we feel confident enough to start picking up more things and more complex things and start coaching people and so on and so forth. So, fifth and last one, share what you know, right? So you see here that teaching is the reflection of learning, as you can see, as you can see in the picture. And why is that? Let me actually share an example uh, on this one. I used to work with a really cool and smart engineer in the past. He was really able to solve any kind of problem. And at some point, I realized he was really senior, by the way, right? So I was also the scrum master uh, there in that team. And at some point, I realized that when it came to 
sharing knowledge, there was some reluctancy from his end. So I had a talk with him and I realized that he was a bit, afra- a bit afraid of what would happen uh, to him if he shared what he knew. However, when you don't share what you know, your team will always stay in uh, low maturity levels. When you share what you know, you help other others grow, so you lift others, and you also subsequently lift up the organization itself, which is a vicious circle actually, because everything will come back to you. So if you're if you're even afraid of the credits, you're gonna get them. Don't worry, but it shouldn't be. Uh, a, a goal to get the credit. Knowledge is the only thing that multiplies when shared, right? So when you're good in, uh, at what you do, everybody will, will start looking up, at you, looking up to you, right? So that's why I'm saying, please do share what you know, because it is not about keeping everything to ourselves. Otherwise, open source software would never exist, right? So, and once again, it is about rising by lifting others. Because when you do something, it will come back, no matter if it is good or not. Keep that in mind. And you know that already, more or less. So, because we do have still some slides and i really want uh to also see what kind of questions we have a short recap on the five things you should be doing on a daily basis to grow your career first of all read code write code third of all deliver code solve problems and of course share what you know right these five main things I want you to do on a daily basis to grow your career. At some point, I know many of you might already be wondering how I already uh, touched a bit upon this question a bit earlier, right? So I'm pretty sure at some point, many of you might be wondering, but yeah, it's cool, deal, and... uh, Everything you say is really cool and blah, blah, blah. But how could we really keep it up in a fast-paced world nowadays, right? How could we really be motivated to do those five things in a daily basis, on a daily basis, right? How could we really keep it up and after our nine to five, find enough motivation to do those five things? So let's talk a bit about motivation right now. And first of all, I would like to touch a bit, or let me start it differently, actually. Speaking of motivation, I would like to, first of all, divide the entire thing or split the entire thing in two parts. What is motivation? and how to get motivated. So let's start with the what of uh, motivation, right? So what is motivation? I don't know, I'm just a villager. So let's try to define together what motivation is, right? So what is motivation? Mm. Let's see. To me, motivation is what makes me wake up every single day, go to my work and give my all, once again. What makes me wake up every single day, go to my work and give my all, right? Okay, pretty straightforward. This is with the what. What about the how now? How could you stay motivated? Is a really good question for the year 2020, right? And uh, sorry, the circumstances we're currently facing well i'm sorry i don't know the answer and i'm pretty sure nobody will be able to help you find that answer out for yourself because nobody can actually provide you better input 
than yourself in your life, of course, because you're the one who experienced everything in your life, the good and the bad, of course, the bad parts. Uh, you, you know your background, the way you, were, you grew up, uh, your experiences. So you only know the good buttons of yourself to push him or her and steer the mindset in the direction you want. However, I, what I can definitely tell you is what helps me get motivated, right? For me, for example, it could be only positive music. For example, I only listen to trap or rap music. Of course, you might laugh at it, but it works for me. For someone else, there might be uh, rock music that might work. Uh, for uh, someone else, it could be, for example, a walk in the park, uh, doing some uh, workout. I don't know. You need to find to find it out for yourself. Take some time and reflect to find that out. But what I, I really want to stress at this point is that you should be, no matter of how you're going to get motivated, you should be driven by two main things. Gravity and aspiration. Once again, you should be driven by gravity, but also aspiration at the same time in order to keep it up with your goals and in order to stay motivated. Why is that? Because at one point, gravity, you need to understand, A, I step on the ground, I know I'm still nothing, I still have quite a way to go, quite a way ahead to keep growing and to achieve my goals. So humbleness. But at the same moment, while being driven by gravity, you, know, you also need to be driven by aspiration, right? You need to stay humble, but you really need to believe that you can achieve what you believe you can achieve. Sorry, you really need to believe you can achieve what you wish to achieve. If you don't believe it, nobody else will do. I'm telling you, right? And that's why I'm saying, if you're not able to motivate yourself, nobody else will do it for you. Nobody else can do it for you. That's why I'm saying two main things on how to get motivated. Gravity and aspiration. Find, first of all, what works the best for you. And then, gravity, aspiration. I know I'm nothing, but I also know I am able to achieve what I want. You need to believe it. And uh, I will touch a bit upon how to believe on something when I'm going to talk uh, about the three takeaways of today. So uh, that was a bit about motivation. And let's touch a bit upon the productivity. I have a few productivity tips that I would like to share with you today. First of all, Automation, right? Uh, it's quite a topic nowadays, isn't it? Doesn't this sound like automation? No, of course not. It sounds like um, a shortcut, right? So what I would say is that uh, if you see something happening more than twice, it already it, it, we already talk about the pattern, right? So if it happened more than twice, why not already automating it? And of course, here on top of this slide, we see nothing else than just a very simple bash script uh, I created to automatically push and publish both on Git and NPM. And yes, I'm talking about the small um, math library I created for my own learning purpose. Uh, so that I could basically, uh, so yeah, basically, sorry, this is a script that I created for my own uh, math library to publish both on GitHub and on NPM. Again, as you see, I'm not sharing rocket, rocket science today. I'm just sharing simple tips to make our life easier and achieve our goals. So what I'm going to say, what I want to say here with this script is that of course, it's not no rocket science, but if it can, if it it could even save me 
10 seconds per day in a year's time, that's quite some time, right? So it's not about the milliseconds or the seconds you're going to save. It's about keeping your head as quiet as you can. Because we live in a fast-paced world, fast world, right? And it is really important to be lazy nowadays as software engineers, because being lazy means we will find new ways to make our lives easier. And by easier, of course, I mean more automated. That was principle one, automation. Principle two for uh, productivity, documentation, right? If it took you 20 fucking minutes to understand this a small function, why not leaving some documentation behind? Be sweet to your colleagues, right? It might have also taken 20 minutes for someone else to understand that five lines of code. Why not being a bit sweet to the next colleague who's gonna have a look at it, right? So if it takes you a while to understand something, leave some documentation behind. But even if not, you can always leave in one line, right? Explaining shortly what the function does. It's as simple as, as that. Come on. Principle three. What is this all, right? What is this all? No distractions. And I'm gonna pause here. I'm gonna pause because sometimes we really need to be cautious on our way forward. We, do, we really need to, to start or to get isolated sometimes. Of course, I'm not talking about isolation in these challenging times. I'm talking about isolation in general and uh, find some kind of inner peace to understand a problem and solve it, of course. What do I mean by that? I mean that basically most of us or many of us are facing quite some problems or some difficulties when it comes to uh, stay, staying focused, right? So basically, one something else that you can do uh, besides, I mean, besides uh, isolating yourself for a while until uh, you find a solution to the problem you're looking for, uh, to the problem you're dealing with, sorry, there are also two other things that can really help you if you have issues or if you are facing challenges to solve a problem. First of all, on the left side, we see the no mouse principle. What do I, what do I mean by that? What is the no, the no mouse principle, right? So let's imagine, now you, you will not be able to see it, but let's imagine I'm here with my two hands, but I also have a mouse next to me, right? So let's imagine I'm writing code here, and it's really cool, I'm really, I'm, re I'm a really good developer and I can really re write code, but oh, wait, I'm gonna touch my mouse somewhere here because I really forgot something uh, in my ID. Wait, oh, uh, one hand is gone, then, oh, let me check also my phone uh, with the other hand. Hey, both hands are gone from my keyboard. Focus is also gone. So try to learn as many keyboard shortcuts as you can to make sure that you follow the no mouse principle because the more the keyboard shortcuts you know, the less you will be distracted. And of course, on the right side, what do we see? We see noise canceling headphones. I'm pretty sure uh, many of you here tonight, or today, or again, sorry, time zones, right? Have used at some point noise cancelling headphones. It always depends on what works for you. For some people it might work, for some others not. So give it a try if you feel you cannot be concentrated when in a big room or when in a big area with people like at the office, right? So that was it about the no distractions principle. And let's talk a bit about communication. That is the fourth principle, right? What about the no communication? I would really like 
to give you an example here. So I've heard more, um, I've heard it more and more in the past from uh, some other other teams. Uh, I was a uh, scrum master for. In the retrospectives, they were coming and they were using the word they for some other team within the same department. So I was always hearing the word they. Hey, Tio, we didn't, we didn't do it because they didn't give us this and this and this and that. Because they didn't come to us. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. What is they? Who is they? They is your colleagues, right? Are your colleagues, right? What is the reason of having co-located teams when you're not able to take your ass and move your ass 10 meters away to go find them and talk with them? I'm also using the word them now, I know. But you get my point, right? Communication is one of the main, sorry, of the most important topics nowadays. And there are many mishaps there. So please do keep an eye in communicating effectively. And there are all these kind of crazy trainings in communication and so on and so forth. But everything starts from yourself. Proactiveness starts also from yourself, right? Proactiveness means feeling responsible for something. When I don't care, I will not communicate properly. Whereas, when I do care, I will feel responsible for communicating properly and sending that detailed mail or uh, guideline. I don't know. Keep an eye on that. Find a mentor, right? Isn't that uh, important as well? If uh, ha had we been in a, in a different setup, I would definitely ask you to raise your hand and uh, tell me how many of you have a mentor nowadays, because it is a really important part. Earlier, quite a few years ago, to be honest, quite some years ago, I was really delusional enough to believe I knew everything and I didn't need any mentor to help me with anything. However, the people who are there had good experience with them. They are always there for a reason. Experience makes you better in many aspects of your professional life. And when you don't have that experience, it is always good to ask for some help on that. Finding a mentor will definitely give you a boost towards achieving your goals. And what do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. Example, right? So for example, I do have a mentor and my mentor is 66 year old, years old. Imagine what happens. So basically we meet once a month to discuss anything around business and our professional lives. What happens when I meet my mentor? Basically, I have a bunch of questions in my mind that I would like to ask for a specific meeting with him. And I go to that meeting. And you don't know how cool is it, how cool it is to get to that meeting and get all these questions answered without even asking them. Just imagine, by just talking to him, any kind of question I had in my mind is answered without even asking it. It is definitely of high importance to have a mentor. They will provide you the 10,000 feet to view in your career because they've been through many more things in their professional life, they are better in decision making than you are, and they will definitely help you with providing, as I said, the 10,000 feet overview. Because many times, as people, we tend to be 
emotional on our decision making, right? And in professional life, decision making is also an important aspect. However, when we are driven, when you when we are carried away by emotion, this will definitely harm our decision making. That's why a mentor is always important to keep you sober. Sixth principle, relax. It's not the end of the world. No matter what happened today, there is always another day tomorrow. Do take some time off for yourself. And of course, principle seven, take some good rest, please. I want you to at least sleep, to at least sleep for seven hours. That's why this is also principle seven. I want you to actually sleep between seven and eight hours. Less will mean that you will not be energetic enough for your work tomorrow. More than that will mean that you will feel sleepy after that. And as I'm always say, as I always say, it is different to sleep between twelve and six compared to six and twelve. So do sleep normal hours, especially if uh, you're working during, during nine to five, if, you're, uh, if your working hours are uh, nine to five. And of course, do sleep enough. That brings us to the last automation, sorry, to the last productivity uh, principle, which is of course, the step back. What happens? And why do I have this slide, of course? In basketball, it is also a term, the step back. And for the ones uh, who know what basketball, uh, what this basketball term is, I mean, I know in Brazil, you guys have uh, quite some good basketball tradition. And I really appreciate uh, uh, the Brazilian basketball team. Uh, you also have some NBAers there. So I'm pretty sure everybody knows about it. But what is a step back? I do see the basket, I do see my goal, I can see my goal. However, there might be someone who is taller than me, there might be someone else who is bigger than me and hinders me approaching my goal, hinders me scoring the two points or the three points and is being an obstacle, a hurdle, a hurdle for me to achieve my goal. So what happens there? You still have a goal. I still want to score, but I cannot go directly like that, right? Take a step back. Find your balance again, because you, need to, you might need to try a different approach. You might need to shoot from a different angle and find your balance. Have a look at the basket again and shoot to achieve your goal. So step back when you feel something is not going your way. Take a step back, reflect, see the basket, have a look at the basket, have a look at your goals, reorganize your goals, have a look at the planning again, and score. So that would be all for uh, the eight steps to be more productive, and of course, a short recap. First of all, so, Product, productivity principles, recap, right? Automation, documentation, no distractions, communication, find a mentor, relax, sleep, and of course, step back. Quite exhausting, right? And I'm, I'm pretty sure actually many of you are already wondering, okay, Theo, you, talk, you, walked, us, you walked us through the software engineering perception of yours uh, in 2020, a career in T, um, main things, uh, five main things one should do on a daily basis to grow their career, motivation, productivity principles. What are the main takeaways from today? So basically there are three 
may take away tonight or today once again. First of all, work hard. Nothing can be, can be compared to hard work, right? Many people talk about politics, and I agree, they play a role, or connections can play a role. However, nothing can be compared to hard work. I keep repeating that. That is one. Number two, be patient. Of course, I'm telling you to go far. But at the same point, I'm telling you, be patient. How could you really combine those two? So basically, what I actually mean is on a daily basis to go fast. Have a to-do list on a daily on a daily basis. You go through one one by one. Go through the items you would like to achieve in your day. So on a daily basis, I want you to focus on speed. However, on the, in, a lo, in the long run, I want you to focus on being patient. So, once again, micro is speed, running every day, but macro is patience, knowing where I want to go, being patient about what I want to achieve. I also know that, of course, it will take me some time to reach that point. That's why I need to run on a daily basis. But also keep patient. Everything will happen if you put in the work, if you are patient, and what is the third takeaway? If you're able to hear fucking nothing, right? It doesn't really matter what anyone, what everyone thinks of you if you really believe in yourself if you really believe you are able to achieve something you will achieve it right because nobody is in your situation nobody is in your shoes nobody grew up the same way you did nobody went through the same shit you might have gone so it doesn't really matter if your spouse or your, or your partner or your friends or your family are telling you something. If you believe, I always accept feedback, do not get me wrong, but if you really believe you can achieve something, go for it. Because in the end, it is not about proving others wrong, it is only about proving yourself right. And with that, I would like to actually uh, wrap it up. And uh, of course, thanks a lot. Uh, do feel free to follow me on Twitter. I'm active there. But also, the main, motiv the most motivational shit, the actual motivational sh shit happens on Instagram. Feel free to follow me there as well. I'm always more than uh, eager and happy to ask any kind of questions around uh, career, uh, open source, uh, motivation, and anything like that. So with that, I would like uh, to sum it up, to wrap it, uh, wrap it up, and uh, actually ask for your questions. Daniel, uh, do we have any questions? Yes, for for questions. OK. Uh, where do I need to go to read them? Uh, do I need to go to the live stream? OK, I can see them. OK. Let me about so the first question is uh, about creating content. What kind of content uh -huh. do you suggest? Do, do you suggest? Uh, basically, I would suggest uh, it depends on you, as I said, right? So um, it is always up to you what you like uh, to create. I am not the one to tell you what you should create because if I force you. Victor, to create what content I think is important for your growth, you might not like it in the long run, and you might get even demotivated and stop, actually, which shouldn't be the case. It doesn't really matter what kind of content that could be. For example, if you like football, which I know you like, because Brazil is also really famous for uh, football, you might be able to go to a football game 
and uh, combine it with uh, a Java course. So how, uh, for example, uh, and create a vlog out of it, right? So, for example, uh, a vlog around how I managed to succeed in uh, OCA JP certification after going uh, to that football game. I don't know, that's just a silly example. What I want to stress is to create content that you like because only then you will be able to like something and to actually create meaningful content because the more you do something you like, the better you will become. And of course, the more impact you will have. Nothing will happen if you do something you do not like. I hope uh, I answered uh, the question. If not, feel free uh, to find me later on on Twitter. And uh, I will go directly to the next one because I also, I'm also looking at the time. So again, I see uh, from Victor about, re about reading code. Uh, it's about reading, let me do this somehow differently. And uh, let me, no, it will not work. Sorry, excuse me for this. I will need to keep it here. So, um, so yeah, basically about reading code, it's about reading raw code or reading some tutorials. I will also leave this up to you because, for example, you might feel that uh, reading some tutorials, Victor, might work better for you, right? Uh, however, I do think the raw code, if I may put it that way, always helps more because what I've been hearing more and more is that, hey, Teal, you know what? Uh, I went um, through those tutorials to learn a new language and uh, they couldn't really help me out. And uh, I ended up uh, being feeling really messy around uh, my approach. So my advice would be read raw code. Of course, there could be exceptions where some tutorials might help more, but read raw code, read commit from other people in open source projects that you have contributed to or in open source projects that you're using in your day-to-day -day life and try to understand, especially when they're using some pa patterns you do not understand and try to understand what they are doing. Leave comments in those areas and try to understand or even get in touch with the people who created the, those pieces of code. Hope I also answered this one. Once again, if not, please find me afterwards. What languages, so the next one, what languages or principles you think are fundamental to be an excellent software engineer? That's also a good one, good question. And let me be honest, it's not, about the language, right? The main thing is to be able to solve the problem. Remember what I mentioned? Problem solving is one of the main things you should be doing on a daily basis, right? So problem solving should be your goal. Your goal, again, should be to improve your problem solving skills, right? How could you do that? First of all, by learning the best practices of software developer sorry, of software development. This is what you should focus on to improve your skills. It's not about the language because more or less all the languages are solving the same problems in the end. It's not about the language you're gonna use, it's about the problem you, you're trying to solve. So what you, where you should focus on is to actually learn the best practices. And for example, um, patterns, software patterns of software development, right? Uh, you should be learning those two things, best practices and patterns, I would say. Uh, and then language comes next, but I would say one language for the backend is good, one language for the front end is good, and some databases will always give you more than enough knowledge to solve any kind of problem. Uh, plain JavaScript could be, uh, Java could be, 
Java could do as well in some database. I leave it up to you. It always depends on where you want to steer your, car your career to and the problems you will need to solve. And of course, where your interest lies. Well, uh, I will also go directly to the next one. Could you please talk about learning multiple stocks? Oh, I could talk about that. Yes, I don't know how much time we have, of course. Diane, do we have time to talk about multiple stocks? I think um, about multiple stocks, yes. Okay, um, multiple stocks, what, what do you basically mean with that? I, I'm not sure, first of all, uh, I understand the question. But uh, again, I would say it always depends on the problem you're trying to solve. So multiple stocks, if we are talking about uh, Java with JavaScript or a view with uh, um, Angular or uh, whatever in the middle uh, as a middleware. I I'm not sure. I honestly understand. So uh, if we have time later on, feel free to leave one more response. Otherwise, uh, feel free to find me directly on uh, Twitter. What else about open source? How much does that influence your career? Of course. That's a good question. How much does open source influence your career? I can give you an example of myself. I can only talk about myself, right? So basically, we're doing with Werner Kyle, uh, the spec lead of JSR 385. We're doing the JSR 385 talks. And there in the introduction or uh, somewhere during the talk, I mentioned how I got involved with the JSR 385, right? So my example is that it affects your career a lot. Of course, it might not directly affect your day-to-day -day job, but at least your community uh, work, it will definitely affect it. For example, I started just as a single contributor uh, in JSR, on JSR 385, I started by fixing some documentation, by sorry, by improving some documentation, by fixing some bugs. And after some point, I realized that I was standing there with Werner, the spec lead, giving presentations about JSR 385. So it can influence your career a lot. I would say it is always up to you to what extent it will influence your, your career. And you guys in Brazil have excellent examples of engineers who really made it, who really grew a great career out of open source software, right? There are, you also have great speakers, for example, I know Daniel is doing great work. I know Otavia is doing great work. And then you have a bunch of other uh, speakers and uh, software, uh, open source software contributors. So one more point, I really appreciate uh, the contribution of Brazil in uh, the software engineering part, to be honest. So short answer, it is up to you to what extent uh, software, uh, open source software will help you grow your career. Other questions? Do you have any suggestions uh, from uh, this from uh, Felipe? I guess I hope I pronounce it right. Uh, do you have any suggestion about good books? About good books depends. Depends what we're talking about, right? Are we talking about uh, getting certified on Java? Then yes, I would definitely recommend uh, the latest books of uh, Malaguta, for example. Uh, on uh, the, the Java certification itself. Are we talking uh, about getting a very basic understanding in Java? I would definitely recommend the head first Java, right? And uh, this is how it goes. Are we talking about uh, clean code? Of course, the books of uh, uh, Uncle Bob, right? Uh, everybody knows about them. Uh, it always depends what we are talking about. If we could make that more specific, I, I 
think uh, I can provide more answers. But I would say what I will actually answer what I answered in a previous question. It always depends on what you try, what you're trying to solve. The, the most important part, though, is to have a basic understanding on problem solving. So software patterns and best practices. There, I think I do have still good book, two good books that uh, I can share later on because I cannot recall at the moment, but I'm pretty sure I have something on uh, those two as well. Uh, I do have a book which is only about uh, the software patterns and uh, how those could help you in your day-to-day -day life. And I do have a, one about architecture as well. I will come back to you, Felipe, later on because I cannot recall those two recommendations. I, I hope, though, the rest I mentioned uh, answer, have answered already your uh, question. Are there any more questions? Did I miss something here? No more questions. Hello, friends. More questions? Okay. Yeah. Sure, uh, Victor. Sh sure, Victor. Uh, I will. I will share it uh, later on to to both of you, to both uh, of you. Yes. So, if there is nothing else, once again, uh, thanks a lot. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, for the two questions, uh, I will come back to the to those ones via my Twitter handle later on. Daniel. Um, excellent lecture. Uh, who do you like to say summit in final? Sorry? Um, uh, will you say summit in final? Who yes, would you like to say final? Yes, definitely. So, uh, basically, let me just uh, keep it here. So basically, once again, thanks a lot uh, for inviting me to this uh, meetup. Thanks a lot uh, for giving me the chance to have even a virtual uh, gathering with you guys. I am really looking forward to traveling also to Brazil sometimes to have an actual meetup when uh, situation, weather and uh, circumstances allow us to do so. And uh, many thanks, of course, to Daniel and the great work you're doing with uh, the South Java uh, community and uh, the great work you're putting into the community yourself and the rest of the group as well. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you for uh, lecturing. It's very good. Uh, very good. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, okay. Bye. Thanks a Thank lot. You. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you.